WebRTC stands for Web Real-Time Communication. This is relatively new browser specification that let us to stream video, audio or any other type of data peer-to-peer -peer using only browser in real time. This web API unlocks us an easy way to create such applications like Jitsi, Google Meet or Zoom. In this tutorial I will show you how to create video chat application using WebRTC. Even if a video stream will use peer-to-peer -peer connection, we will still need a backend server to handle the information about our peers. If one joined or left the room, or started or stopped streaming, and etc. Here is a simple diagram how the architecture of our application is gonna look. Yeah, Drakaris uh, wants to see the architecture too, that's uh, maybe the most important thing in the beginning of the project. Here it is, our diagram. Uh, as you see, we have our backend server that will use Node.js and Express and it will also use a WebSocket. Okay, I made a typo. And we will write everything in TypeScript. Our clients they will send data to uh, this uh, signaling server and also will get uh, messages from it uh, about other peers activity. And on the client we will use React.js and TypeScript as well. For styles I decided to use Tailwind CSS because I don't really want to bother myself with uh, design and uh, CSS. Which features we will have in our application? One-to-one -one call conference call with multiple peers and also we will create a text chat just to exchange messages and uh, screen sharing. I also uh, wrote a file transfer here but to be honest I'm not sure if I really will implement it, we'll see. This tutorial is not for beginners, it requires a knowledge of JavaScript and basic understanding how Node.js and React.js works. Of course, I will explain everything what I do step by step, but still, I will not go into basic details. You will also need uh, Node.js installed on your machine and npm or yarn to install dependencies. Personally, I prefer yarn because it's faster, but you can use npm as well. Comments are almost the same. Now let's set up our repo for client and server. Ok, let's uh, set up our repo. We will need two folders, client and server. Uh, first, uh, let's go to our server folder and uh, run yarn init. It will initialize an empty package JSON for our project in this uh, folder. I will just use the defaults. Uh, let's install a uh, packages that we need. Uh, run yarn uh, add with uh, dev dependencies uh, and we will install TypeScript uh, tslint yeah and that's it for now and now let's uh, create our tsconfig file uh, we can create it very easy with uh, tsc init command. Uh, this command uh, generates a basic uh, uh, tsconfig file for us and then we can um, adjust it uh, for what we need. Uh, what I want to change here. First I want to add the out dir. It will be uh, dist. This option, as you can uh, see, it uh, tells uh, to a uh, compiler uh, where we're gonna store our uh, compiled files, our JavaScript files that TypeScript compiler will create for us. I also want to uh, uncomment this uh, no implicit any, strict null checks, strict function types, no un unused locals, no unused parameters. Uh, module resolution should be node. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's here. We uncomment this line. And 
base URL we can leave it uh, as it is uh, pass uh, here we will uh, create an entry for our node models uh, so um, compiler knows how to resolve uh, our model names I also want to add options include and exclude uh, just pay attention that uh, I do not add them to compiler options I add them on the same level to the root one these two options uh, exclude we will uh, tell to our uh, TypeScript compiler uh, that uh, we don't want to parse and compile node modules so we exclude them and uh, we want to compile our project that uh, we will include and uh, it will be an src so we will compile any files with ts we have to create our src folder where we will create our files our actual typescript files for the project we will create an index.ts file there the next thing we are going to do is to create a tslint.json and in this uh, file we will add few settings uh, we will tell that our config will extend the following one uh, tslint recommended we also want uh, the default severity to be error js rules we will leave them uh, empty for now and now um, we can try to uh, actually run our project just to see if it works uh, let's uh, write something in our index.ts file and uh, one thing i forgot to do we have to change this uh, entry point to dist because our compiled files will be in the dist directory and now we can try to run it <clears throat> first we need to run CSS command just to compile project and as you see after we run it uh, here our dist folder appears and it contains our uh, compiled JavaScript file and now let's try to run it in node and yeah it works but uh, as you see it runs our um, server only once and then it stops uh, but we need our server uh, running constantly and uh, watching all our changes that we make and uh, recompile it for this uh, we will add few scripts in package.json we want to check our code uh, with uh, our tslint and uh, we will create a command prebuild for it we pass uh, our config file here and uh, we also pass uh, ts config and if uh, linter finds something um, some errors we will tell to fix it and uh, after all uh, typescript errors are fixed uh, we run the build command and uh, build command is just our typescript compile command we want to actually start our server before we start we want uh, our um, command automatically run uh, press start and uh, just to run the build here let's just write this node command for now so what's going on here when we run yarn start now it uh, runs our start command but as we have this press start command 
First, it will run this one. Uh, and as we have this pre-build command, before running the start command and build command, it will run pre-build. As you see, we have an error here because we, in our TSLint JSON, we configured everything to be error, uh, this default severity option. But uh, we want to debug with console logs and uh, for it, we need to add uh, rules to override these TSLint recommended rules and to say that we actually want a console log to, to throw a warning, not an error. So the, the name of the rule, as you can see here, is no console and we tell it to be warning instead of the error. We can also uh, provide options. It's an array and here we will just tell which uh, consoles we want to be able to run. And now if we run uh, yarn start again, uh, we can see that we have the warning about console log, but then we have our uh, log, it works and it's done. But uh, we still not watching the changes. Uh, so let's change it now. Let's add a script or package JSON. Uh, watch script. And it will be almost the same as build, but with a minus W flag. It means that we not just compile it once, but we watch for changes and we compile every time when our code changes to um, restart our server every time uh, when code changes and recompiles, uh, we will install another library, uh, node mode. And instead of calling uh, a node here, we will call node mode. But if we run it now, again, it will not watch our CS, uh, our TS files yet. Uh, because uh, it does not run our watch command. So what we're gonna do here? We're gonna use a concurrently uh, model for Node.js that allows us to run two commands here in parallel. So we will run this uh, uh, concurrently command uh, with the option Q others. It means if uh, some of these processes are already running, we will stop them. Uh, and uh, we will run these uh, two commands. First, we will run a yarn watch. And then we will run this node mode. And let's try now. Uh, as you see, it says starting compilation in watch mode. So our watch um, parameter is working now and uh, our code uh, works fine as well. Now let's just change it. And it recompiles and uh, changes are applied. This is it for uh, setup. We only need to add our git ignore file and uh, we will add node models there and our dist um, folder also we just in case we'll add some logs file files and and files this is it for backend now we uh, will set up our client uh, it will be extremely easy. Um, this git ignore should be inside server. Yeah, so uh, client, it will be extremely easy because I don't want to bother myself uh, with uh, setting up Webpack and React for this uh, tutorial. Uh, we're not gonna use it uh, for production uh, and we will just use uh, uh, create React app with uh, TypeScript option. Let's uh, go to client folder 
and run npx uh, uh, create react app and uh, we uh, will pass template option typescript and uh, it will do everything for us so our um, react app installed let's uh, run it so that's it we prepared repositories for our further work and the next step is to write our signaling server and if you're going to see how to create this web signaling server watch the next video in this playlist and stay tuned for more